Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. Now in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the difference, uh, the different ways that we can pass uh, parameters to functions in C++. And specifically, we're going to talk about pass by value versus pass by reference. So when we're talking about something like pass by value, what we're doing is passing copies of the original integers or floats or doubles or objects into the function. So, you know, if we pass an integer into the function, we're going to make a copy of that integer. Pass an object to a function, we're making a copy of that object to work on within the function. Now, with pass by reference, it's a lot different. So, with pass by reference, we're passing in a reference to the original object or the original integer to work on within the function. That means any changes that we make to that uh, integer or that object, um, those are occurring on the original one because we've just passed it in by reference. We're passing in a reference to the original object. We're not just passing in the value and making a copy. Now, to clarify what this means even further, we'll open up this example, pbv underscore pbr.cpp. And what we're going to be passing into our functions is just an instance of this class wallet. So we're passing in an object here. And the reason why we're passing in an uh, instance of this class wallet is because we can use the copy constructor to track how many times we're making a copy of this, uh, this object. So inside of uh, our copy constructor that we have defined down here that we've looked at in the previous video, it says calling the copy constructor whenever it gets called. So now anytime we make a copy, we can track it. So the first function we'll look at is a pass by value version. And with the pass by value version, our parameters look something like this. So we're passing in a wallet to this function by value. All we need to do is say what the type is, and then we give uh, the parameter some name w. So now when we pass in, say, a wallet w1 into this function, it gets copied into this temporary uh, wallet called w, right? So we're making a copy into this parameter. Then when we call, you know, w.set dollars, w.set sends, and we print out uh, the contents of this wallet, what we're really doing is we're working on this copy of the wallet, right? We're not working on the original wallet. Remember, we're copying into this parameter. Then with our pass by reference version, you see that we're using the address of operator that we use for references. Now, when we modify this W, right? So we're not copying into this W here. We're just saying that W is now a reference to whatever we passed in. So if we passed in a wallet, say W1, W now refers to that original wallet W1. So when we call set dollars and set cents here and print, these are all uh, modifying the original object, the original wallet. So we can see the, that down in this main function here. So we're creating an original wallet, w1, uh, initializing it with 10, 37, just using our custom constructor. So dollars is equal to 10, cents is equal to 37. And then we call random wallet pass by value. So the pass by value version of this function, right? And we're passing in w1 by value. So when that happens, right? W1 gets copied into this uh, a new object, W. So we'll see a call to the copy constructor. Then inside of that copy of the object, we'll call set dollars and set cents and print. So we're not modifying the original object, we're just modifying uh, the copy. So let's go ahead and compile this and then we'll run it. And we'll see that it indeed does call the copy constructor. So we're, we are making a copy here. And we see that from within the function, you know, we see that the value of the wallet has changed from 1037. So it's changed from 1037 to 83.86. But we see that the value of wallet from the main function is still 1037. And that's because we were working on a copy of the original wallet, not the original wallet itself. So if we go ahead and uh, use the other version of the function, so if we go ahead and move the comments around and we'll comment out, the, the pass by value version and we'll uncomment the pass by reference version. Now we're going to call random wallet PBR and then we'll print out uh, within the PBR version and then also after we've returned within the main function and we recompile this and then we run it. We see that the copy constructor doesn't get called. The reason why the copy constructor doesn't get called is because we're not making a copy, right? We're just passing in a reference to the original wallet. So we're working on the original object. Now we see that the value of the wallet within the function is 8386, and the value outside the function is also 8386. That's because we didn't make a copy here. We're working on a reference to the original wallet. So if we go back into the code, when we're passing in w1 here, now w inside of the pass by reference version refers to the original w1. So we're modifying those original values when we're calling 
set dollars and set cents. All right, so that's going to go ahead and do it for this example. That's a little bit on the basics of pass by value versus pass by reference in C++. As always, all this code can be found at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we'll go to repositories. We see C++ crash course. Then under fundamental concepts, uh, functions, we see this pbv underscore pbr.cpp. So feel free to check out this code, download it, play around with it. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.